three Mercedes that you have never heard of before. So, so today the, I am doing a special video that I think is going to get a few thousand hits, hoping so. Hoping every single one of our subscribers and then some will watch this. It's about three classic Mercedes that you have never heard of. And these cars were all prototypes that got very close to production. And some actually did get produced. So let's begin. The earliest of these cars was the Mercedes W157. And it was built around circa 1936 all the way up to 1940 it was under development and what the w157 was uh was a v12 model with an aluminum 6.3 liter carbureted v12 that produced about 200 and something horsepower which is pretty good for the time uh, they were supposed to be supercharged and this was going to be a large luxury car that would eventually replace the 540k However, Mercedes chassis construction at the time revolved around an X oval tube frame design, meaning that you had a giant, uh, a giant ovular tube frame that would support uh, specialty coach work with a very long chassis. And one of the issues that Mercedes had was not just the frame collapsing under its own weight and the body dimensions starting to change during testing especially over bad roads because of issues with said tubular frame but also fuel delivery issues because fuel pumps at the time were not up to the workload and also problems with getting the car to um to be as good as fast as powerful as the 540k at the time and so remember that the 540k was an amazing car even for its time i've driven one i've experienced it for a third car from the 30s it's really quite ahead of its time and mercedes had to make sure that the that the w157 was ahead of its time at the end of the day i think mercedes would have eventually developed the car but world war ii changed everything and Include, this included how Mercedes designed and built, built cars. So the next big Mercedes was not available until 25 years later when they came out with the, uh, with the uh, Type 600. It feels like a century elapsed between Mercedes in the late 1930s and Mercedes in the mid-1960s because the technology progressed so fast. And indeed, at the time, Mercedes was working on another small car because they wanted a small car division, which they had tried to eke out of the existing auto union franchise. And the product of this was the Mercedes W118 with the M118 four-cylinder overhead cam engine. Now, the M118 was designed to be a very lightweight, high-revving, high-compression four-cylinder engine with about 80 horsepower. These 1.7 to 1.9 liter engines did eventually get used in the uh, in in the Audi. Uh, I I think that the Audi 70 and 80 and 90 used these engines, and these were the first post-war Audis that were built in 1965. They were constructed on the same platform as the DKW F102, which was a basic small sedan at the time. And um, the 1.7 liter middle compression engine was the Mercedes M118 engine, curiously enough. So these cars did actually become production cars, but they were produced by Volkswagen, who bought DKW Audi, collectively known as the Auto Union, from Mercedes. And if Mercedes had continued on this trend, Audi may have stayed with them and actually made some good cars. All of these early, all these late production auto unions like the 1000 SP were true were actually built under the parentage of Daimler Benz. And because of that, uh, you could actually consider them sort of part of the Mercedes family. So if somebody brought me an auto union 1000, I'd say, well, you know, somebody's got to work on it. Um, the Mercedes CW311. 
the CW311 was a prototype that um, uh, Buchmann Auto built for Mercedes. And these cars were designed with a mid-engined M100 engine, a 6.3 liter M100 engine. And uh, they were, well, let's just say they were juiced up to make about 380 horsepower. So the first CW311s were all M100 powered. The body was composite. They had a massive front end with a huge glass windshield. And um, uh, Mercedes, although they did not want to build the car, they gave Buchmann a special license to build it himself. So that it was built by B.B. Auto as the CW311 from 1979 to about 1984. And although early prototypes I mentioned used the M100 engine, eventually Buchmann liked the 5 liter M117 engine better because it was lighter and more tunable. It didn't feel like there were a few hundred bags of concrete stacked in the back of the car. And so Buchmann decided that uh, M117 engines were going to be the way to go for a while. So Eventually, the German firm Eisdera began producing the car, and Eisdera eventually substituted the 5-liter and then eventually 6-liter AMG M117 for a 6-liter version of the M119 engine with KE Jetronic injection, the ultimate Mercedes supercar. Again, the engines were tuned way past their factory ratings to produce a car that was good for 185, 190 miles an hour, which is quite good for the early 90s. The, the downside is that somewhere between 25 and 50 of the CW311s were built, both as BBs, BBCW311s, and uh, Isdera, um, I think they were called the, the I was it the Imperator? I'm not sure. Somebody... Somebody fill me in in the comments. It was either the Isdera Imperator or the um, Isdera 108i. I'm not sure. Isdera later on went to build, I think the Imperator was the mid-engine car with the 2.3 16-valve engine. Later on, they built their own open supercar with a mid-mounted 16-valve engine, both 2.3 and 2.5 liters and with the AMG power pack if one so desired. And so I think that these cars represent something extremely special that hopefully uh, I might have a chance to experience myself one day. So there we have it. Three really amazing Mercedes that were either produced in very limited quantities. By the way, there were about 40 prototypes of the V12 produced, but nobody has found one yet. So if you can find one of these V12 Mercedes prototypes, that would be some serious automotive treasure. Now, some of these other cars, you know, if any of you have heard of them, leave your comments below. And in the meantime, I've just given you another great reason to subscribe to this channel where you're going to find information out about classic Mercedes that's nowhere else on the internet and isn't discussed by anybody else. And uh, in the meantime, as well, if you're already subscribed, please tap the bell for notifications and leave a comment below. And of course, let everybody know that you like us still uh, by hitting that like button. And in the meantime, we'll see you next time with another great uh, video about something you didn't know about.